Welcome back to Twin Flame Energy Podcast. I am your host, AJ. And I am your co-host, Dominique. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am I am tired today. I am tired. But this is podcast number six, and the title of today's podcast is Gridlock. What is holding us back? Yes, I am tired as well. New things this week. Start a new job. Working a ton of hours. It's later than we normally record the podcast, so <laughs> definitely tired today. But we are in this. Mm-hmm. So, like you said, gridlock. What is holding us back? So, of course, I have our. I'm the Vanna White of articles. <laughs> And I have our lovely articles right here in front of me. If they can see your hand. I'm going to do the music. Do, 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 do. I'm just joking. Oh, well. That's what you do at 10 o'clock when you do, just woke do, up from do, a do, small do, nap. Do, do, do. <laughs> I need my, uh, my keyboard <laughs> while we sit here. <laughs> so. I've seen Sunday morning services like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> the first article Mm -hmm. that I have is entitled seven things holding you back from a cheaty little yeah, bit. I, pl I plan on doing that a lot today. That's tonight. It. Seven things holding you back from achieving your goals. And as usual, mm -hmm. all of the links to all of the articles will be found in the lovely description box. I really have no idea where this article came from. I think it's, Lawofattraction.com? I, I believe like, so. I like that. Yeah, that that's, that's nice. Don't sign. quote me, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> 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 so, seven things that are holding you back from achieving your dreams. Reason number one. Yourself. No. <laughs> well, that's a big part it's of it. It's in your mind. <laughs> number one. You close your mind to new ideas and perspectives. Mm -hmm. If you stick to what you think is right and are not open to any different ideas, you won't go any further than you already are. Right. If you can listen to others and see things from their perspective, then you can become more open to new ideas. That's not what's holding me back. I'm really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. I'm really tired. <laughs> and so we get goofy. <laughs> well, hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. What are your thoughts on that first one, though? Do you feel like you're closed-minded to new ideas and perspectives? Mm. I know what I think of you, but I'll keep that to myself. Of course, because you can always think whatever you think. And the reality is, is that I actually am more open than I come off to be. I'm more open than I come off. Meaning... I do a lot of research. I do a lot of things. I do a lot of like looking and searching for stuff and you know what I mean? So I'm like looking for a lot of different things and it may come off like I'm not, but I am. Okay. I'm just, I'm just really reserved, I guess. Gotcha. You know, well, number two, you ask yourself the wrong questions. If you find yourself asking the what if question, you may be holding yourself back. We can sit and worry about what ifs, if it, but it won't help. Mm -hmm. Instead of asking yourself what if is going to fail and I should, man, let me say that again. Instead of asking yourself mm -hmm. what if this is going to fail and I won't get anywhere, mm -hmm. instead ask, should I try doing this instead of what I did before? It's just a thought. Answer the right questions. Try doing this instead of what I did before. Instead of asking what if, right? Okay. Number three. Mm -hmm. You don't assess your mistakes. If we don't assess our mistakes, we won't know why we're not achieving and what we want to achieve. Do you think you assess your mistakes? Yes. Yes, I and I, I would say I assess them, but I can be completely honest that when I assess them, I tend to 
you know, beat myself up, you know, a lot, you know, in a way. And and Moon is right now is playing on the chords. <laughs> <laughs> if you hear the doo -doo 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 -doo, that's our little kitty playing around our chords <laughs> so number four mm -hmm. you procrastinate if you find that you procrastinate a lot when it comes to taking the steps to achieve your goals then you're definitely holding yourself back I know that's definitely mine I definitely procrastinate Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I feed off of the last minute because I get a ton done at the last minute. But then yeah. when what I've noticed you, is this week, like, for example, this like week, mm -hmm. getting ready for this podcast, for example, I've been busier, but right, I did right. not wait till the last minute. And it feels a lot better right. because right. I actually got things done versus feeling like I was just muddling through things. Right. So. I guess sometimes it can go work in your favor with the adrenaline if you if you're that type of person. But you can't likes, live like that. It can be lot, something know. that you do here and there, but your right. life can't be based off that. You won't get anywhere. It'll hold you back. Right. Number five, mm -hmm. you don't have a clear vision. If you do not have a clear vision or an idea of what goals you are wanting to achieve, you're not going to achieve them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number six. You fear what people think. It is very easy to fear being judged or being worried about what others think. But this is something that if that you are personally letting happen to stop you from achieving your goals and your dreams. I don't have the problem. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven. <laughs> the way he's like self-analyzed. Like, <laughs> nope. Yep. Uh-uh. Definitely not me. I'm just playing. Number seven, you expect instant results. Ding, ding, ding. I definitely have that one. Oh, yeah. Certain things in life, such as achieving your dreams, take time. If you are impatient and expect results straight away, you may be feeling discouraged and angry when these goals are not met straight away or as quick as you would like them to be. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I may want things to happen quickly, but you never get started. Oh, what? Boom. I'm just playing. I'm just extremely patient. So patient that he'll start next year. No. I'm fully aware. I feel like you can hear a pin drop you can. like that. Yeah, because Moon right now is like having the time of her life. I mean, she is running all. But why is it that she wants to stay around our courts? <laughs> She, like, wants to stay right there. She'll be fine. All right. So the second article that I do have for today is 10 things that are holding you back from pursuing your goals. So the first one that we did was seven things holding you back from achieving your dreams. But this one is 10 things that are holding you back from actually pursuing your goals. Okay. Okay. So the first one is fear. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, yeah, fear of ridicule, and fear of disappointment. That's a lot. A lot of people, I would say, probably. Yep. Stop letting your fears hold you back, it says, with an exclamation point, mm -hmm. which is easier to say than to do. Yeah. By very far. <laughs> Number two, excuses. Did you find yourself putting things off? Coming up with excuse after excuse as to why you can't begin pursuing your goals. Those successful in achieving goals possess the ability to get past excuses. I'm not ready. It's not the right time. I'm not good enough. I'm too old. I'm too young. All of those are just excuses. Mm -hmm. I self-analyze, but I self-analyze you too. This is you. What? You'll say, once the house, if you've done this for years, what? I'll say, Let's, we need to be doing this or that. And you'll be like, I can't do that right now because there's just too much going on. Just too many distractions. The house isn't organized or da 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 da. Like we've said that about a lot of things, like working out or anything. We'll be like, well, once we organize the house, it, there's always excuses is a big one. And you know it. It is what it is. <laughs> 
Number three, and this is a familiar one from the last list, procrastination. Putting things off until next week, next month, next year, and often forever. I'm a big advocate for starting things on Mondays. So if (laughs) it's Wednesday, I'm like, I have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to plan to start on Monday. (laughs) The amount of times it you just said, feels good in my soul. The amount of times you said we're going to just start on Monday. Yes, like you know, because yeah. I say that because it's not like we have what we need or we're prepared. I, I, if I don't have a plan, nothing's going anywhere. And even sometimes, if I have a plan, it still is going to fail. But it's a lot closer to not what? failing. Don't say that. I mean, no, I'm saying, no, I'm saying. No, I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. Yeah. It still has the possibility to fail. It's not like if there's a plan, it's definitely going to happen. Mm-hmm. But it's definitely not going to happen if there's no plan. The idea of there not being a plan makes me already uninterested in whatever is going down. That's because you're a planner. Exactly. So if there's no so plan, it's different for you. You've yeah. already lost me. Absolutely. Number four, lack of belief. Mm-hmm. Um, a lack of belief either in yourself or your chances of pursuing your goals will certainly hold you back. What goes on in our subconscious mind has an impact on our actions and our lack of actions. Mm. We hold negative self-limiting beliefs, which could be holding you back from living an amazing life. So interesting because that probably holds deep in both of us. Especially on a subconscious, because at the end of the day, you can tell yourself, like if somebody says to you, do you believe in yourself? Sounds like something you say to a child, but when you say it to an adult and you really take a moment to think about it, most of us probably don't. True. true. And even if we can't admit that like out front, somewhere in the subconscious, that's the reason why you never actually put your all or something. Right. A lot of, a lot of people, I think like who come off as oh they're they they got it all together they think they're they're their own point or they arrogant or they a lot of those people are the main ones who don't believe in themselves the most mm-hmm. they just a master of putting on and they end up putting on so much that it makes you look bad you well know what I mean? the, the show face is something we all have yes yes the show face so it's preface. Yes. <laughs> That's an inside joke. So <laughs> number five, lack of focus. Every time you lose focus, it kills your chances of success. When we spread our focus too much, we diffuse our effort and then we don't have what it takes to focus on those things most important for us to do. When you are pulled in different directions and face competing priorities all vying for your attention it can easily you can easily find yourself lacking focus Mm -hmm. that's definitely hard for me because i'm always pursuing 12 things at once (laughs) yes like right now yeah i'm gonna go i don't even like to tell (laughs) i don't even like to tell people all the things that i'm working on because then i feel like they roll their eyes because i'm like they're like really you're doing all of those things it's almost like and i'm like like, if you if you have one thing to focus on I you, can't. You can't sit still. I, I can I be honest with you? But then yet I've been more productive in the three in the two days since I started working than mm-hmm. I've been in the last nine months where I've been at home all day. Right, because what it does is it, it's something that ignites when you're busy. That, that I can do more. Well, it's like your your cogs are moving. Yeah, my cogs it's cogs very hard moving, for my cogs to move it's like, when I have nothing well, to do. They're already moving. You might as well do this, this, and this. Yeah. Because you're on the way to the bed. (laughs) You know what I mean? Exactly. Versus, like, you're already in the bed. So, you know what I mean? Exactly. It's it's harder to get up from it when you were already up. You're already doing it. You're already moving. It's like, well, just add two more things. It's not going to hurt. It won't hurt. Exactly. So, yeah. Today has been the most productive day I've had in a very, very long time. And that's, I mean, that's good. So I think, and I'm noticing that I just need to just be busy. Because if not, I just fall asleep. (laughs) So number (laughs) six is lack of a big picture. Uh, What I call a breakthrough goal 
other than whoa i'm I'm literally reading this this is this, what I call a breakthrough goal others call a b h a g big hairy audacious goal is what is needed to give you excitement to drive you every day to pursue your goal big dream big and start small you need enough burning desire to drive you forward if you don't first dream big then your goals mm-hmm. won't inspire you that's mm-hmm. very true if your dream is extremely attainable then it's not really a dream it's just mm. something you're working towards like a dream is something that requires a lot of different elements to like be aligned together in order for you to be able to achieve them you right. know what i mean right. No, so that, that's what saying. makes a big difference. So number seven, not having a plan. Lastly, ha ha ha, my plan. Lastly, without a plan, <laughs> you can easily get lost along the way. Imagine trying to divide across the country, excuse me, to drive across the country, say from London to Gasglow without a map. So clearly this article is overseas i don't know where glass glow is <laughs> i was like um i said say glass glow glasgow i don't know where glasgow is and how far it is from london but i might google it this week to maybe that's get a better picture of the this. let's just say from i don't know charlotte to los angeles <laughs> <laughs> without a map while you know the general direction to head in there are lots of there's lots of ground to cover and the potential for a great deal of wrong turns and dead ends. But you know it might be fun. Listen, an adventure. Not when it comes to trying to achieve a big dream or goal. <laughs> right. <laughs> I say you definitely have a plan, but obviously be open to deviations in the plan. As things change and you got to tweak. Preparation. Yeah. Be ready to tweak. Yeah, absolutely. So number eight, not taking action, Mm -hmm. not reviewing your progress. Okay. Once again, it's 10, 23 PM and I'm sleepy. So I'm just going nuts here. So number eight, not taking action. There are certain paths you'll need to take before you can achieve your goals. Mm -hmm. That path consists of many steps, steps you have to take. Choosing to take action to pursue your goals, those specifically designed to take you on the right path instead of indulging in activities that only bring you temporary happiness, but knock right. you off of your course. Right. That's really hard because sometimes it's like, that is, that is like tonight. Sometimes I would be like, let's just watch TV and fall asleep. But it's like, no, I'm now working. I work tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Our podcast goes up tomorrow. You have a bedtime. What makes sense? <laughs> no, I don't have a bedtime. Well, no, no. What I mean is, it's just I have to you have decide to, to do the things about, that are important. Yes, you have to think about over yes. what may be fun at the moment. Right. And in reality, this stuff is still fun. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, even though I fell asleep and I wanted to remain there, yeah, I was like, okay, got to get up. We got to do this. You know what I'm saying? Because you have things. This is. Something we're working on. Right. Priorities. Mm -hmm. So number nine, not reviewing your progress and making adjustments. This is something that I'm a big stickler on. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm very, like if it's a weight loss plan, I want to make a calendar. (laughs) I want to have them weigh in days and and check progress and da, da, da. You're not into that kind of stuff. But I'm like, how can you even know if what you're doing is working if you're not measuring whether or not it's working? You feel it. That's some bullshit. You feel it. No. No. Goals, by their very nature, take a while to achieve. So it's important to review your goals and your progress. If you do not have timely and actionable feedback, then you won't know what's working and what's worth it. See, it says it right here. 
you won't want, you won't know when to change or when to stick to what you're doing. Anyone who is successful in consist- consistently achieving their goals is also consistently reviewing their goals and their progress. Reviewing your goals regularly allows you to make adjust- adjustments early so you can stay on course. Stay the course. And number 10, giving up too soon. Mm. Too many people mm. set really big goals but give up too soon. Mm-hmm. We all hit points when it seems like things are going next to impossible. When you're already overwhelmed, it is easy to talk yourself into giving up. But giving up too soon I had to change my page. And I staple through the word. All of that. All of that. <laughs> giving up too soon could cause you to miss out on success. You never know how soon you might start seeing progress if you hang in there and give it a little more time. Right. So this second article here is from some website that will be listed <laughs> in In the the description description box (laughs) now (laughs) there it is (laughs) so honestly we are going to take a quick break but we will be back oh yeah we're going to clearly have to be back because uh moon is knocking over the world (laughs) (laughs) tearing up the set but we'll be back in a moment yes we will Oh, 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 oh,
<laughs> All right, we are back, and our scent sprayer is letting us know that we are fresh and ready to what? come back <laughs> for the second half of the podcast. I'm still bobbing my head, though. That right there, honestly, is personally, when I'm feeling weak, it literally makes me feel strong. So serious. Like, so serious. My favorite song, Stay the Course, by my favorite group. Yeah, like, vapors you know on intermission you're supposed to go get water get you know straight. i just listen i was like sitting here i ain't even drunk water yet oh i drank my water i got water but right i here, still though. listened but i didn't even like <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> but yes once again stay the course by vapors off of the fallen album available everywhere where you can stream music so Next thing we're going to do is we are going to head back into the book of the month. So, of course, this month's book is The 8080 Marriage, A New Model for Happier, Stronger Relationships by Nathan and Kaylee Klimp. And this week's assignment was to read part one entitled Exp- <laughs> <laughs> Part one, entitled Exploring the Three Models of Marriage. So. I had to drink on that one. Yeah, clearly. And you wanted the whole world to know. That's right. <laughs> so go ahead. What are your thoughts after reading chapter one, two, and three? Well, I think that for a book, to the introduction was like captivating i will say because you read that i didn't yeah and i was you was like <laughs> nobody reads intro i was like this intro i don't <laughs> you know because I, like, I was like reading i'm like it's like really because it, it really grabs you you know like you ever watch a movie and then it's like it's like slow mm-hmm. and then it started getting good after like the end of the movie mm-hmm. <laughs> you know this one is like it comes in with like stuff popping, mm-hmm. kind of like Blade. So, they was they was getting it in right in the beginning of the movie. So that's how funny. that's how movies should start. So this book really starts off um, talking about a lot of the the old ways and and how we were programmed basically. Yes, how we're programmed to think about relationships. What we're programmed to think about roles, more importantly. And yes. who does what and why this and why that and, and 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 you ain't served good enough and you know it, it goes in. That's that's all I got to say. Mm-hmm. Well, to get a little bit more in depth, I have the book in front of me. Of course. Tons of stuff to read and quote from it. In depth. So I'm going to get here. started <laughs> because when I read, I highlight. Yes, yeah, she does. So Justin, I'm I'm just gonna go chapter by chapter in with this book. one. Yeah, that's why I buy them. So I can write in them. So, chapter one was entitled The 8020, Where We Were. So basically, like you said, dived into the past of relationships. So it, it's just so much. I'm just so excited. Seriously, I'm very excited. So, there is a doctor named Dr. Edward Pulaski. He was a pioneer in the field of self-help and marriage advice. Mm. So he had a book that he wrote in 1945 called Sex Today in Wedded Life. And so he outlined the 80-20 model (laughs) and wrote down basically a checklist for men and women. So for husbands, this wonderful checklist, says for husbands, Remember your wife wants to be treated as your sweetheart always. Don't be stingy with money. Be a generous provider. Compliment her new dress, hairdo, cooking, etc. Always greet her with a kiss, especially when others are around. (laughs) (laughs) Look, basically, look, I'm going to just butt in because it's just... 
he gave advice on how to uh, please a man, really. I mean, it was just like, it's so off. It's so off kilter. Okay. And people may not agree, but I'm an advocate for not the typical old school way. That's just that's just me. But go ahead. You jump in the gun. We're still I know, talking I know, about I know. So, just I know. just put it on mute. Uh, me? Yes. No. So, for the wives, it says, "Be a good listener. Let him tell you his troubles." See, I was trying to tell. Can you, you let me I, finish reading? I, know. I was just, I was just kidding. It was, it was funny. No, nope, it wasn't. <laughs> At ten thirty-eight p.m. Oh. Be a good listener. Let him tell you his troubles. Yours will seem trivial in comparison. (laughs) I'm reading this word for word, people. Uh Remember, your most important job is to build up and maintain his ego, which gets bruised plenty in business. Morale is a woman's business. Never hold up your your husband to ridicule in the presence of others. If you must criticize... Do so privately without anger. Don't try to boss him around. Let him think he wears the pants. And that's it. (laughs) For um, his, um, the way he believes husbands and wives should do things. So here's another part that I thought was interesting. It says, there's one other virtue of the 80-20 model. Unified direction. Even if it's a direction set solely by the man, couples have clear incentives to work together towards a common goal. If you're a man, you want your wife to excel at raising the kids and setting a fantastic table for your guests. If you're a woman, you want your husband to get that exciting new promotion at work. All this is to say that in spite of its many problems, the 80-20 model is set up to incentivize something positive, a spirit of a shared success. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was interesting because it, it didn't just bash the 80-20 model in this first chapter. They gave you all of the information and kind of told you why it lasted so long, pretty much. Like, here's another part here that I thought was interesting. It says, romantic love had almost nothing to do with the decision to I marry. Say, yeah, it was because they took out all the feelings. But if you saw the moment that just happened, I looked over like, "Be quiet!" I'm she, reading. She had a knife to my neck. Don't say that. <laughs> Anyways. We're talking about in the 50s. Romantic love had nothing to do with the decision to marry. Marriage throughout most of history was about maximizing your chances for survival, securing your economic advantages, or for those lucky one percenters of the distant past, building political alliances. Uh, The perspective of history, marriage is chosen often based on some idea of romantic love. I'm sorry. Basically what they're saying is in the perspective of history, the idea of marriage being chosen based off an idea of romantic love is very modern idea. It's not something that's been around for a long time. The idea that we've moved beyond the inequality any model is also false Mm -hmm. because just because things have changed, but that model still kind of is still underlined in the way that things are seen says the invisible hangover of the 80 20 model. It's more hidden. It's a form of inequality. And it isn't about who spends more time on housework and childcare. It's more about, and this was really, really, really interesting who spends more mental and emotional energy on it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this is something to really keep in mind. It's a difference that matters because most tasks in domestic life aren't hard to do. For instance, it's not hard to pay your cell phone bill. It's not difficult to remove to renew your driver's license. The mental and emotional burden that makes of making sure these mundane tasks are done. That's the big part. It turns out 
that that is much more difficult to remind your spouse to pay the cell phone bill every month and deal with the emotional experience of irritation that arise in, rises in you both, that it's actually, then actually paying it. So basically it's the stress of, and I, I totally experienced this myself, the stress of, oh, I got to talk to AJ about the phone bill or uh, we had it. It's all of that is worse than just paying it. Mm-hmm. Like the paying portion is not the hard part. It's right. it's the feeling about before you pay it. Right, right. Is really interesting. Emotional labor has to do with who's handling the tensions and who's mindful of them, who takes it as their work to make everything run smoothly. So that's a that's a whole nother ball of wax when you get into that whole idea of who's doing what. You know what I mean? Right. So we got into chapter two, which was entitled 5050. Where are they now? So that was taking us to a little bit more of a equal mindset, which is kind of where people are today. So the 5050 mindset of fairness also has its vices. Instead of encouraging us to work together towards this, a common goal like the 80-20, it often pits us against each other. Now that we both have the freedom to start a business, get promoted at work, and earn advanced degrees by going back to school at night, we often pull, we're often we often pulled in opposite and conflicting directions on our separate goals, plans, and ambitions. So now the belief turns to, when you lose, excuse me, when you lose, I'm, if I say that one more time, <laughs> when, when you win, I lose. Yeah. So the 80-20 basically had clear and defined, this is what you do, this is what I do. Yeah. But women didn't like feeling like, well, you know, they want to do more. They don't want to just sit at home right, with the kids. Right. But then we're in this 50-50 mindset. And it's become a, I did it four times, you did it three times, Mm -hmm. now I'm mad at you kind of situation, which is not productive either. The 50-50 model also represents a shift from the clarity of the 80-20 model in which everyone knows their roles in the system to a state of chaos and role confusion. So when you're dealing in the 50-50, nobody really knows what their role is. And they're just trying to do just tip for tap. as little as possible almost. Yeah. And it just goes back and forth, back and forth, back. Yeah. Yeah. It was super, super interesting to hear that. Yeah. And then we got into chapter three, which starts to talk about the 80, 80, which is where we want to go next. Okay. So when talking about the 80, 80, oh my God, like when I tell you marking this stuff up, there's not enough time to talk about everything that I read in, in this. So let's see here. Where do I, where do I want to begin? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, she's not a nerd guys. <laughs> <laughs> so they were talking to this couple who were going back and forth about how much time to spend. Like, I think the husband said, we're going to go to my parents' house on Friday for Mother's Day, and then we're going. Well, they decided that one person got Mother's Day, and yeah. the other family got Father's Day. Yeah. So they were like, "Hey, we're gonna go to your to your mom's house or to my mom's house on Friday and spend the weekend, and then on Father's Day we'll go that Saturday and yeah. spend the night." And the person was like, "Why are we only going for one day to my parents' house? Mind you, they didn't really care. It was right. just the fact that the other person was getting exactly. more." Yeah. It's, and it just becomes a back and forth. And so I think it's so interesting how you go through that back and forth. And it says right here, they also start to see themselves more like a team. During a recent conversation about whether they would leave Chicago for one of their careers, for instance, they quickly shifted from fairness to this new perspective. Mm-hmm. And it opened up a world of possibilities. It says we realized that if we move, that if a move is good for the family, we would do it. And that's how we ended up resolving decisions. We both see that even if the chips didn't land on our individual side, 
it's because the move is in service to something bigger, our union. Right. So they're making right. moves that are better for the collective and they're not as focused on their portion. Right. Right. You know what I mean? And even business models kind of work like that in some cases. They, you know, it's good for the, the trilogy actually, Mm -hmm. you know, it's good for you. It's good for me, Mm -hmm. but it's good for our whole family. Yes. So let's go ahead and, you know what I mean? Yes. That's, that's, That's good. Yeah, for sure. It says happy couples, have also moved beyond many of the traps of the 50-50 model. In one woman's words, the idea of fairness, this was ser- this is really funny. The idea of fairness in marriage is like a football game where everybody is fighting to be the quarterback. But if everybody is the quarterback, then who's thro- who are we throwing to? Right. There has <laughs> where's the offensive line and how do we ever win the game? The couple who thrived, in other words, could see the f- that fairness turned out to be the obstacle in the marriage, not the goal. Right. Instead, they talked about moving beyond fairness towards radically different mindset and structure of the marriage. They described a shift from 50-50 to 80-80 model of building a life together. So in terms of what in the heck the 80-80 model even is, and to give more clarity to that, so the 80-80 model of marriage basically puts you in a position of focusing on gratitude versus what you're not getting. So they say that basically it's separated into two parts or two dimensions. Mm -hmm. So the first dimension is considered to be internal and it's called mindset. Mindset is how we think, feel, and interpret the daunting tasks of building a life with another person for decades to come. Going from 50-50 to 80-80 involves a mindset shift from fairness to radical generosity. As one man told us, We don't think in terms of fairness. Instead, we are both bending over to be contributors and help each other out. My wife just told me that the fifth grade moms are setting up a bake sale to raise money for the school. And my first instinct was, how can I help? This spirit of bending over backwards for your partner is the essence of radical generosity. Now, how often does that really happen? If a woman comes home and says to her husband that the fifth grade bake sale, something, something, he's not thinking, how can I help? That's not normal. Most dudes <laughs> don't, don't think like that by no means. Like be, be truthful. Would you think like that? When I say, Hey, Eliana got a invitation to a birthday party. Your first mindset is not, Oh, I'm going to take her. Let's be real. <laughs> it's- I mean, it's more like you, well, I guess it depends because so you'd be more of a concern. You'd be like, uh, okay, now you want to ask questions or, you know what I mean? You know, so, I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. You know, you'd be like, uh, we got to bake something for the school. Okay. And, (laughs) you know, you know, generally, yeah. But that's technically what they're saying is the problem because we're all looking at, what we don't want to do and hopefully hoping that the other person will do it. Right. That's not 80, 80 at all. So, you know, something to think about. Mm -hmm. So it's the second dimension of the 80, 80 model is external. It is what we call structure. Structure includes all of the operations, logistics, responsibilities, rituals, and practices that allow us to stay connected to the mindset of the chaotic flow of life. The 8080 structure organizes roles, priorities, boundaries, power, and even sex around the idea of shared success. It's an 80% effort to prioritize your goals together over your own. 
as one woman described it, the mistake I see happening over and over again is thinking you instead of us. Another woman noted that the key to her marriage was understanding that if you have a success, it's two people that have the success, not one. In short, all of life is 80-80 model and structured around a shift from me to us, from individual to shared success. Mindset and structure fit together like the software and hardware on your computer. Mm. Yeah. One doesn't work without the other, yeah. right? Yeah. Very, very true. And I know I'm reading a lot, but it's just so much to share. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this honestly was like super important. So it's like when we shift to an 80-80 mindset and structure, by contrast, we stop burning so much energy on pointless arguments and screaming matches. We can now direct all of that creative power towards common goals that make us both better financially or better financial stability. If I can speak, financial stability, raising happy kids, impacting the world in a positive way, going on adventures, and having outrageously good sex. Now, this is the part that I thought was interesting. It says, why not 100-100? Question mark. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, because we're focused on the 80-80. So in this case, the risk isn't that you would end up hobbling around with a pulled muscle. It's that you will go too far in the direction of generosity and selflessness that you would end up experiencing the dangerous opposite of losing your own identity, preferences, and purpose. Exactly. So while 8080 is meant to push you to the edge of generosity, it stops at 80 as a reminder that you can be both radically generous and individually fulfilled. Right. Right. I think that was the part still, that really still staying with self. Yeah, that's anyway, the part right. that really yeah. hammered home. And this is the very last thing I'm going to say and then we'll move on. <laughs> it says when we shift the mindset and structure that create this constant unease we experience an exponential increase in energy we're now working with each other instead of against each other as a result we're each more creative productive and alive right. we not only achieve more as individuals but we begin to achieve a collective levels of success we never could have imagined. And we now have more energy left over to invest in friendships, children, and other activities that impact the world. How we manage the mundane affairs of life has everything to do with how well we connect in our most intimate moments. Mm. I thought that was so hardcore. It's basically it like how you yeah. connect to washing the dishes it's so connected to your intimate moments mm -hmm. that in itself yeah. was enough. So these benefits of the 80, 80 model sound great in theory, but where do we begin? And the answer is mindset. And that's where we leave off for this week. One in terms of the book yeah, and we'll buddy. be moving forward. So moving forward for next week, obviously we will be headed into part two. Which, if I'm not mistaken, let me take a look, consists of four chapters. Chapters four through seven, part two is called Cultivating a New Mindset. So that should be super interesting. Get that reading done. Get some good information in us. Yeah, buddy. All righty. So where are we headed now? All righty. It's time. For pick a card, any card. <laughs> we are once again picking from the best self intimacy deck. Um, and just to recap on the categories, we had about you, we had intimacy, relationships, past, life, and random. So, what is the pick today? All right, so you picked last time, so I guess it's my turn. Yep. All right, let's take a look here. Instead of picking a, I'm just going to pick a card. Like, get the, and then we'll see what, um, which one I just, 
Let's see. This is a life card. I picked a life card. Life? Mm-hmm. Okay. And... Just shifting here. So, <laughs> life card. What is the craziest thing you've ever done and would do it again? Repeat it one more time. <laughs> What is the craziest thing you've ever done and would do it again? Craziest. <laughs> mm-hmm. Go ahead and answer that. You first. No. It's your card. I asked the question. You go first. I, I, I insist. I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's a, I'm trying to think. Crazy? Hmm. <laughs> right i i really can't think of something just crazy and you know yeah what might be crazy for me may may not be crazy for anyone honestly else. you know what i mean i don't know if i can even answer the card i'm gonna be honest you don't have crazy not, nothing i would talk about on this podcast oh. <laughs> i can always pick again we'll pick again all right, I'm going to pick again. And I think I'm just on purpose. I'm going to go for the about you section. About you. And the card says, what makes you feel the most competent? Hmm. You start that one. Yeah, you start that one. I don't know. Oh, when I write. Yeah. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Your turn. Yeah. <laughs> you can't just end it like that. I sure can. Elaborate. No. But when you write, though, right? Like, that's... Yes. That's like... That's when I feel the most competent. Right. I mean, it's funny for me to, like, when, I, when I'm producing music. I mean, <laughs> when I'm making music. But I guess that's because I just need to feel more, I don't know... Uh, in myself, you know what I mean, or mm-hmm. you know what I mean. I guess I'm belittling myself when I when I say that. Okay. But yeah, doing music. Okay. Because when I do music, I I'm not just doing music. I'm not just clicking buttons. I'm literally putting a piece of me in it, there and you I'm go. like all in. So yeah, you know, yeah, that, music. That was a nice easy card. Yeah. Listen. We're not going to sit here and talk about the craziest things we've ever done. I mean, I don't negative think I have anything. It, it, I probably got some boring stuff. I yeah, don't know. I've, I've not had a boring past, so I'll keep that to myself. So, <laughs> moving right along, we all know what time it is. Do you know what time it is? What I time know is what it? time it is. <laughs> it is time. That time again. To draw for next week's topic. You ready? Yeah, drum roll. I'll let you drum roll. <laughs> that drum roll's trash. Okay. <laughs> it got a good, like, you know, separation. But we could jazz it up. That ain't a drum roll. That is not a Listen. drum roll. It's whatever we want it to be. More like an Africa bombada. (laughs) So, the topic for next week is... Ooh. Trust. How to navigate your story and traumas with other people. How to know who can be trusted. That's a mouthful. How to know who can be trusted? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That's a mouthful, right? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Especially when you're talking about in terms of relationship. Yeah. Or if you have been in a relationship for a while and you'd be like, I don't know if I can actually trust the person I've been with for 10 years. Yeah. So when you actually think about it and sit in it, it's deep. It's yeah. really deep. Yeah. All right. So last but not least, small new little segment, final thoughts. AJ, give me your final thoughts on today's topic. 
anything we read in the book, anything you like. You got 60 seconds. Go, go, go. 60 seconds. And go. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, I think that um, I can't wait to dive further into the book because it's like it's, it's getting started. It's getting in it. And, and uh, I'm interested to see how to change the mindset. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like that's 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 the that's the first step. Now we're going to dive into what it is. You know yeah. what I mean? And what to do. And a lot of times you you tend to be like, okay, how how do we get and how do we move past certain blockages and mm-hmm. gridlocks and all the things that that's stopping us? But then you have to really sit and be like, okay, what's the steps? Right. What, what do I do? What do I need to do? What works for us? So. Gotcha. Um, I just, honestly, I just can't wait to get to the next part. Okay. To the book. All right. Well, I will say. And I like those cards, by the way. I like those. Those are cool. Yeah. I like them too. So my final thought, I say is super personal to us. I think issues being unresolved is the biggest thing that keeps us gridlocked. Mm -hmm. Because obviously we were friends first. Mm -hmm. So like I told you this last time. That when we have a super big argument, I feel like I don't like my husband. I'm f- angry with him. But at the same time, in that moment, I need my friend. And I miss my friend. And so sometimes that trumps the, you know, my wife anger. And we end up just slipping into friend mode and never actually working out the husband and wife issue. And it just gets buried Sitting until the next up. time it explodes. Yeah. Because it's easy for us to go back into watching our shows Mm -hmm. or doing whatever we do. So Mm -hmm. I think that is the biggest thing holding us back from the next level is slipping. We just hide the husband and wife stuff and slip into friend mode until it's time to try to be husband and wife again. And then we end up fighting. Because it's easy. It's easy. It's easy. But then we get into husband and wife and it's like, yo, we're not on the same page necessarily. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that that's that's pretty deep. But now, uh, no further ado, that does it for this week's podcast and all the articles used to drive today's discussion forward can be found in the description box and as well as the links to uh, the the book, yeah, um, and our new book as well. So the uh, oh Joe Dispenza's book and the new book. So keep that in mind. And thank you for tuning in today's podcast. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And of course, ignite your energy. energy.